Welcome to you both. Chris, I'll start with you. What counties are you focused on? Uh, well, you know, it's 40 counties in about 10 states. But what we tried to look at was what counties are closing early and counting early. So we're looking at the Atlanta suburbs. We're looking at a number of the counties in North Carolina, whether it's uh, New Hanover or Wake, and then really Florida, 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 whether it's Orange, Seminole, Sumter. I think those are going to be some of the key counties to watch. And most importantly, these counties uh, will be uh, a number of them have already started counting the early vote and all of them will be closed by 8 p.m. Eastern tonight. And David, that brings up your big point, which is about the kind of red and blue mirages we could see based on the way different states count their ballots. So um, what's your latest thinking as we start? To, I don't know if we're getting any indication yet about, you know, how these uh, how quickly these votes, these mail in votes are being tabulated in some places where they are allowed to be counted uh, before the polls close tonight. Um, but how do you expect this to play out as the evening progresses? We're headed for historic record shattering turnout and election day turnout supports that theory uh, right now. And Texas and Georgia are legitimate toss ups with hours to go before the polls close. And I think a year ago, Democrats would have would have been pretty happy about that. Look, the the way the map boils down right now, uh, Joe Biden is likely to flip Wisconsin and Michigan in addition to Nebraska's second congressional district, which is Omaha. That means that to get to 270 votes, he needs to win either Arizona or Pennsylvania. Donald Trump needs to carry both of those in order to win a second term. Now, when we're looking at results early on election night, I agree with Chris. We're going to be focused on Florida, where the polls close uh, at least uh, everywhere except the panhandle at 7 p.m. Uh, I'll be watching Sumter County, Florida carefully. That's the villages where uh, the median age is 69 years old and 79 percent of people voted in advance of Election Day. We're likely to see about 84,000 votes that are reported shortly after 7 p.m. Uh, and Donald Trump likely needs to win Sumter County at least two to one uh, to have a chance of winning Florida. He won at 68 to 29 percent in 2016. Rick Scott, who won by a tenth of a point, for the Senate in 2018, won at 71 to 29. So if Joe Biden can, can get more than 33 percent of the vote in Sumter, and we'll have very few Election Day votes reported there, likely less than 12,000, then that would be a very good sign for his chances more broadly. So, uh, Chris, I'm also curious if you agree. I think the way the New York Post framed it today was if we know the results tonight, uh, it's a bad night for Trump. Do you agree with that? I do. I mean, look, I think there, there are really sort of two scenarios tonight. Scenario one is that Biden wins in a landslide pretty early. Uh, to Dave's point, you know, Florida, Georgia, uh, also North Carolina, Ohio, Texas. Those are kind of the big five Trump 2016 states that close and more importantly count early. Biden wins any one of those states and it's game over for the president. Scenario two uh, is that Trump holds strong with, with those early in-person votes, and we probably have to wait for Pennsylvania to finish counting, which, went, which could be all the way until Friday. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.